in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed now the challenge with many people is when it ha because of the the seeming autonomy and liberty that happens in the presence of the anointing you find out that people misuse the anointing because i can walk in the flesh i may want to make a name for myself right now and i can tell you there's someone here the power of god will come on and you will be shocked to see that it will happen but you will have to vet it from the lens of God's desire to know whether he was the one who directed that or it was just flesh are you seeing that now just because it happened did not necessarily mean it accomplished the purposes of God this is where the abuse of the anointing comes when I become a recipient of the anointing it is within my power to misuse it are we together and many sadly have misused the anointing for the gratification of the flesh many have misused the anointing for financial gains many have misused the anointing for all kinds of reasons so the anointing is God's ability at work in a human or a material vessel to accomplish his purposes and to produce extraordinary or supernatural results I don't need to go into the subject of results we already settled that last week and I pray that by now you see that if your Christian experience is barren of results Jesus Christ will never truly be glorified in your life I hope we're done with that I'm sure that we've settled that already that in our lives manifesting extraordinary results Jesus is glorified and we the Saints also are glorified John 17 and verse 1 the prayer of jesus he lifted up his eyes to heaven and he said father the hour has come glorify thy son that thy son may glorify thee so two people are being glorified here the son is glorified the father is glorified hallelujah it is very important to understand this subject of the anointing I have had the honor and the privilege of talking, praying with so many ministers of the gospel through the years. And most times, because of the privilege of what God has done and continues to do in and through my life, when I meet ministers, usually the prayer all they want is an impartation of grace. They will tell you sincerely, Apostle, I'm not getting this result. I'm not getting that result. I don't know why it's like that. I just need that engracing so subconsciously most people know that every time your life is barren of results in addition to the principles you may learn there has to be an engracing upon you to produce those possibilities i have said it and i will repeat myself here in koinonia please listen to me as a human being unassisted by any spiritual agency there is only so much you can do there is a certain degree of results there is a threshold of results and manifestation of possibilities that when you cross it tells men that you are no longer alone there has to be a spirit agency that is assisting you are we together whether in business whether in ministry it is impossible as a human being unassisted to produce certain dimensions of results it cannot happen This is very important. Now, listen very carefully. Why do we need the anointing? Let's answer the question why. This also tells you the, the, there are two primary assignments of the anointing. 
and I want you to understand this. They may not be the only ones, but according to my study of scripture and even in my experience and the experience of so many who have been given unusual access to the anointing, we learn that the anointing is useful in the life of the believer for two principal reasons. Number one, the anointing empowers the believer to subdue the forces of darkness that fight against our destinies and against the advancement of the kingdom. Why do we need the anointing? Number one, the anointing empowers the believer to subdue. The anointing empowers the believer to subdue the forces of darkness fighting against our destinies and against the advancement of the kingdom. So the first assignment of the anointing is to provide empowerment to subdue the forces of darkness fighting against our destinies and the advancement of the kingdom. Is Satan fighting your destiny and my destiny? Absolutely. How long? For as long as you will be alive. Are we together? Psalm 66 and verse 3 it has become an anthem in this ministry. Say unto God, how terrible art thou in your ways? It says, through the greatness of thy power shall thy enemies submit themselves unto you. Is God's servant Bishop David Oedipo who would say that the only language Satan understands is the language of power and he's right satan does not understand english does not understand french satan does not understand negotiation the only thing he understands is power ask egypt um, israel in egypt nine plagues and satan through pharaoh would not let them go but one last plague and it compelled him to let them go so the anointing addresses satan now it's very very important for you to understand this you see satan is spirit satan is not flesh it is not only god who is spirit alone satan is also spirit do you know what that means you cannot arrest him number two you can't take him to a court number three the military cannot help you fight him number four you cannot set him on fire all the things you do to men to find peace you cannot do with him satan is spirit the angels the fallen angels and all the demons and the cohorts of hell they are spirits even though their damage is not spiritual alone their damage starts from the realm of the spirit but it has a physical expression in your life when the devil plants sickness in your body it can start from a dream but it will not end at a dream it will manifest physically and you will see the injury you will see the pain when satan programs disfavor upon a believer it can start from the realm of the spirit but you will shockingly see it manifest physically are we together so it takes the anointing to be able to subdue the forces of darkness let me tell you this do you know every time you stand before god's people please look up to make an altar call i want you to know that we are not the only ones who are seeing you angels are witnesses to that salvation that prayer demons are also witnesses from the day you declare the lordship of jesus christ an intentional line has been drawn between you and satan for the rest of your life whether you are alive except you die but provided you are alive satan is interested in you apostle who did i offend that's not the issue when you were saying jesus i love you you are a potential threat to the kingdom of darkness satan does not give you a chance to grow before he attacks you he knows what the life of god is and he knows what you received even though you don't know it you may you may trivialize what you received but satan understands the implication of being saved in fact satan does not even wait for you to be saved the moment you are born if you just if you are born and you appear just with a spirit he won't really bother you because you don't have the legitimate ground to function on the earth but the moment you manifest with this material body you are already a potential threat 
that's why you read in the bible satan killed children he didn't even give them a chance to grow are we learning why do we need the anointing so that we can have that empowerment to subdue the forces of darkness fighting against our destinies and fighting against the advancement of the kingdom it was jesus that was speaking and he said right from the days of john the baptist he says the kingdom suffered violence and he said the violent will take it by force are we together the bible did not leave us in the dark as to the fact that the whole world lies in wickedness it is true when you leave satan unhindered he will kill everything he can kill he will steal everything he can steal he will destroy everything he can destroy john 10 10 the thief cometh not but for to steal to kill and to destroy satan's tripartite signature the moment if you are unsure who is around verify it with these tripartite activities if satan comes he will never leave you the way he met you he must steal something if satan comes and passes you and you are alone except god helped you or intercession saved you or it's not him but if it is satan you know there are people called pick there are these boys that are experts in stealing they can lift their hands and still steal <laughs> praise god they can pass you with their hands lifted and yet something will still be missing and it's not diabolism how they and... praise the name of the lord so satan is like that he can pass through your finances he can pass through your marriage he can pass through the life of your children he can pass through your spiritual life he can pass through your destiny he can pass through a church he can pass through a ministry he can pass through the life of a man of god you know it is him because something must be stolen something must seem to die something must seem to be destroyed someone shout no way shout it again say no way because for some of you before now you've not seen the necessity for the anointing and satan keeps camping you around that mindset and say are you an apostle no are you a prophet no are you not just a businessman don't mind them he's cheating you let me just advise you right now especially because of these end times the condition for being anointed is that you are alive the moment you are alive just know that satan will come to you if he has not come the messengers are on their way but through the greatness of thy power shall thy enemies submit themselves let me prophesy to someone that any force that has refused to let you go in the name of jesus and by the power that raised christ from the dead he must give up on you finally please sit down hear me your business will not just grow uh -uh. your children will not just be responsible people the ministry will not just grow your political career will not just flourish there is a devil who is determined to make sure everything god in your life dies are we together it will tear your relationship between you and your wife tear your relationship between you and your children destroy your finances until he reduces you to ashes mess up your ministry until you become a testimony of pain and shame satan for you when he does it he will sign it like julius berger will build and write signed everything that was lost shall be returned unto you everything that was stolen shall be restored unto you everything that was lost shall be returned unto me everything that was stolen what makes you believe satan will fold his arms and watch you promoted you think he does not know what your influence will do to the kingdom man of god what makes you believe that satan will sit down and allow you to continue to be a rising voice you think he does not know what your voice will do to your territory oh zechariah and elizabeth it's not about barrenness it's about john who will anoint jesus there are many battles today 
that many of you are fighting that has nothing to do with you it is because of something that will come out from you listen when you see satan fighting your family what is what is finance does he eat naira and cobble and dollars he knows that with that empowerment you will send your son to a mission school and in that mission school one day a prophet or apostle will visit that school he will have an encounter and he will find his purpose and become a mighty man of god so he will make sure that school fees never enters your hand help that woman please i can tell you firsthand every time you see the devil around your life he's not there to advise you he's not there to counsel you he's there to steal to kill and to destroy help that lady please listen can i be honest with you i have seen many demon spirits in my life i'm not telling you what i just read in scripture if you ever see men excelling in spite of satan something is keeping him you don't want listen to me for thousands of years of satan as a defeated foe he has still not given up on fighting god you have to understand the person you are dealing with you will think after the millions of years of his rebellion he should just give up one day satan is as determined today as he was when he left heaven what kind of a creature is that even some of the capons some of the armed robbers some of the terrorists they got to a point where they were broken like children have you ever seen satan repenting have you ever seen his picture on his knees saying god just punish me but i'm ready for peace most people do not know the person they are dealing with if you think oppressing you for 30 years will make satan say it's enough think again apostle he has tied down my ministry for five years one day go better satan go and read your bible a man who was thrown from heaven and after millions of years he is still determined to thwart the purposes of god is there is anything to learn from satan is determination can i tell you you were born in the middle of an old story that has nothing to do with you but simply because you found yourself in that space called the earth you better find out the rules of engagement otherwise you will find out that your life will become a casualty that you know nothing about i remember years ago a gentleman true story the moment he became 13 someone slapped him in his dream 13 years and when he came and met me and he was talking you know a little boy was in one of the schools then in zaria and all of that and he came those times i used to just see them and he was telling me that somebody slapped him do you know true story when he was talking to his father the father said describe who slapped you and that was exactly what happened to the father i don't know if it was around that time but at least as a teenager you know what the spirit was saying welcome to a battle that your being part of this bloodline has forced you you must be interested in what we are dealing with are we together why do we need the anointing because there is a real devil there are real spirits mother the devil will not fold his arms and watch your five ten eight children rise up to become responsible people no his joy is to steal to kill and to destroy you would think if you start crying once satan will pity you find out who he is there are people crying in hell if he's to pity anybody he will start with them not you i don't know about you but for me i've made up my mind as a covenant with god I have no negotiation with satan there are no discussions every time me and he meet he already knows i'm saying this because some of you have allowed the devil lie to you you are a woman don't get into these spiritual things 
some of you you are a man some of you you are not a prayer warrior you don't let the devil keep deceiving you and destroy your life let me tell you this see when satan wants to destroy a family his first target is the strongest person spiritually i'm giving you spiritual intelligence he is not stupid he will afflict with sickness he will afflict with pain he will afflict with frustration so that when you go down spiritually that hindrance has cleared the way he will now settle down and attack someone blasts in the spirit in one minute not my destiny in the name of jesus help those under the anointing in jesus name please sit down let me tell you something please listen to me listen to me listen to me i will not go ahead of myself there is a separate series on deliverance that one will announce it and i will settle down and teach you but can i tell you this i don't mean to scare you but africa listen to me if you are a firstborn listen to me if you are a first male listen to me if you are a last child listen to me if you are a breadwinner listen to me if you are the one who lifts up the head of your family listen to me satan he attacks but there is a protocol to the attack so much ignorance in the body of christ listen please look up look up i want you to pay attention don't you think i'm wasting your time if you are the first to be educated the first for your head to be lifted in your family the first go and read the bible about the laws firstborns not just the first to come out of the womb the first to do anything in life do you know why because the first of anything is the seed and the pattern The first to open a door for a family is the first to create the pattern the first to break out of poverty you think the devil will fold his arms and watch you the first man of god from your village the first man of god from your family the first professor the first married man the first married woman Praise God. Please sit down. Let me try to organize myself this night. Just help those under the anointing. I tell you, God is doing many things as I'm speaking. You came to church. This is Koinonia. No waste of your time at all. Hear me. Hear me. Hear me let me tell you one of the ways that satan moves is called the power of patterns you know what patterns are patterns are repetitive occurrences you find out god forbid don't feel bad your grandmother was raped your mother was raped your daughter was raped they never shared it with themselves yet the pattern will find itself again somebody spent 10 years in america return back to nigeria like an arm robber another person spent 10 years in us or in in in, in, in um, london return back all those things are patterns let me tell you what patterns are patterns are sponsored by altars even if the initiators of the altars go the altars are still valid they will speak 
That is the reason why you see nations go through patterns. Regions go through patterns. Individuals go through patterns. Families go through patterns. Even ministries go through patterns. The anointing is not for preachers. Not the end time anointing. The anointing is not just for men of God. The anointing is not just for adults. Help that person, please. I have seen wickedness in the lives of people. I have seen Satan destabilize the joy and the peace of families. I've seen great men of God with potentials to do things for the kingdom. But Satan just brought them down. I've seen business people who would have been the crown of their regions. Can I tell you the truth? Believe me when I tell you, Satan is not a friend. Learn from his rebellion and his unbendedness. Satan has never told God sorry. He will never tell man sorry. Just believe that about him. So when Satan comes around your life and acts like a friend, beware of what you are playing with. You are not just playing with fire. Satan is every other thing, but he's not stupid and he's not foolish. He has an advantage of age and he's using it well. Please sit down. Why do we need the anointing? To empower the believer to subdue the forces of darkness fighting against our destinies and fighting against the advancement of the kingdom. Mm. Number two, why do we need the anointing? The second reason why we need the anointing is so that we can tap into the dimension of supernatural possibilities. Why do we need the anointing? To empower us to tap into the dimension of supernatural possibilities. Results and possibilities that are beyond the realm and the scope of humans. In ministry, in business, in politics. You think Daniel became an extraordinary politician in a harsh climate just because he could speak good English? No. Even the people consulted through divination and they found out that the spirit of God, they called it the gods, was upon him. They knew that this man was not ordinary. And through the dispensation of three or four kings, he still remained on top. Why do we need the anointing? To empower us to manifest dimensions of supernatural possibilities. Mm. I made up my mind as a person and as a man of God that I will never be ordinary. That my life and everything about it will be extraordinary always. Not just because I want a name for myself. Not at all. Because I have found out that when you follow the natural course of things, time will cheat you, men will cheat you, systems will cheat you. You need to have an advantage that is beyond the natural course. Are we together? It's good to follow the laws of prosperity, I have taught you. But following only the natural laws of prosperity save Johnny you will see when God will bless you or you will see when you'll be empowered in this wicked and evil world when you are one Lord to break through an evil man will reverse you back to start again more than compliance with the laws they are there and they are important I've taught you but there has to be an engracing that can pick you on the wings of the spirit remember that the unit of destiny is time that's why God brought possibilities like speed like restoration these are forces that insist and ensure that you live a victorious life are we learning now in acts chapter 7 and verse 22 let's look at two scriptures very quickly acts chapter 7 and verse 22 media please help us 
the bible says and moses was learned in all the wisdom of the egyptians and was mighty in words and in deeds look at such a man do you know what that meant even though he was not an egyptian he did not have the history there was a supernatural engracing upon him he learned the wisdom of the egyptians he was mighty both in words and in deed they were preparing moses already the level of excellence from his life he was inevitably going to be the next pharaoh that's why when he returned you see as at the time moses returned back to egypt the pharaoh he left had died it was his son Ramesses who was his friend that was why when Moses looked at him and said Pharaoh I'm sure Ramesses would look at him and say dear brother good to see you after over 40 years the only difference is that you have returned back stupid you were wiser when you left you've forgotten that this is Egypt you come and stand looking like a fugitive with a staff and tell me some deity you met in the forest said I should come and release these people who have been in captivity for 430 years Moses you have the wisdom of the Egyptians and he said all right I'm not here for a long story let the rods I told you that they are also preachers I finished my preaching let the rod start his own sermon and when he threw the rod it became a serpent I can imagine Pharaoh laughing and saying you still remember and he called Janus and Jembes the wizards of Egypt and they came and made caricature of the rod of Moses. They threw Pharaoh's rod. It also became a serpent. And God used that. Most of you have not discerned the sermon of the rods. Those rods preached a message that you need to understand. You have heard the sermon of men, but understand the sermon of the rods. Do you know what happened? The rod that became a serpent ate that of the man and did not increase in size. And he picked it up. That is a sermon. Dominion over time and matter is real dominion. God was saying something there. Oh, but I'm not impressed enough. And then one plague after another. You can see that Pharaoh was not a normal human being. You can see the Luciferian manifestation. This is why some of you need to pray for your children. You flog them, they come back and see misbehave. They come out of jail. They come out of the prison cell. Will you do it again? No. Two days, they are back again. It's not normal. That determination is not a human determination. It came from, it's an antichrist spirit empowering people like that. There are people when they are going back to prison, they don't even ask them any question. They just say, just pass, go back. Just go register your name, change your clothes and go in there. Can I tell you this? Creation is awaiting the manifestation of the sons of God. The sons of God are not here to repeat science. Science is an advantage. But believe me, God didn't take us this far to just come and be scientific. I, I, I guarantee you, it doesn't take fasting to be scientific. It doesn't take Bible study to be scientific. What we are manifesting is higher than science. He did not just bring us to, to just do sociology or to do all of... No, 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 no. There will be a spectacular display before Jesus Christ comes. The manifestation of a godlike dimension of power and grace in and through the saints. It has been written so that it will not be changed. The Bible... We will begin to see people manifest dimensions of intelligence i do i say this i like to study a lot about the world and all of that i like to study about ufos aliens for some reason i find those things interesting since i don't watch movies and all of that i now focus on those things and i read some of the ancient science that you know they tell us we are not alone you know there are all kinds of people around the world these ones these species of people and then i just read up all those things and in my mind i said no wonder human beings behave the way they behave there is a minimal level of wickedness that a normal human being should have when your wickedness stretches beyond that border it's not you again it's you and another spirit is that true no matter how wicked men are 
there is a limit when your wickedness stretches beyond a certain threshold you are empowered by a spirit the same way human beings cannot love and be kind beyond a certain threshold when you move past that threshold you are not alone too there has to be a spirit empowering you we need to be supernatural people you see our world today and i don't mean to cause trouble across the body of christ but we have to be careful there is a gradual exaltation of philosophies and science above the supernatural why because a lot of people just believe that societies and territories have been changed through their reception of science we're not against that but let me tell you sincerely this faith work that we are part of it came by a supernatural means it is sustained by a supernatural means find out how we are going to leave the earth it's not scientific what is the skyscraper that will take us to heaven with one last that blast of a trumpet those who are dead in Christ will rise explain the name of the scientific process that gives them new bodies immediately what is it called explain the name of the scientific process that suddenly withdraws gravity and we who are alive and shouting the name of Jesus will be on our way going and those who are laughing at us will wave them and say I told you I gave you a chance explain the name of that scientific process am I against science not at all but let us be careful because the flesh realm including science is Satan's domain he does not want you to rise or see reality beyond the three-dimensional plane because provided you are under the influence of the three-dimensional realm you are in Satan's domain he can manipulate systems and structures he can play around with your mind and destroy your destiny but when you rise to that realm and that plane your life becomes extraordinary we have so many doctors in this ministry there are many professionals it is not unusual that if someone is sick the natural course is to administer a treatment and that is wonderful but what if the doctor is not there and that person may not have the chance to see the doctor is there a possibility of administering something powerful who taught the doctor that you can stand before a tree and pick a leaf and process it in a lab and it becomes an injection and you put it in someone even the doctors depend on the supernatural for treatment the injection does not get to your heart when they put that injection wherever it enters your body they leave the rest do you not know that every other thing that happens is a miracle I read a bit about the human body and I'm surprised at the many activities that happen in the human body do you know when a human being is sleeping science tells us and medicine tells us do you know how many activities in your body shut down just because you are sleeping that means if as you are awake looking at me now you may think it's just your heart and maybe your brain that is working think again if you know the, the it's almost like a riot in your body all the things the cells working if you don't understand they repeat it again this body is as busy as anything and yet there is an invisible hand that keeps it every time I'm in the air I think about a lot of things if I'm not sleeping and one of the things I think about is the miracle of a material body that was created from metals runs and then lifts and now we are above the clouds and we are under the mercy of the creator I'm not, I'm not talking about the dexterity of the plane moving I'm saying literally for 50 minutes or five hours or whatever hours you are under the mercy of the creator do you know that if that plane goes down there is no amount of the, you, you can see the limitation flying helps me to know where science ends the moment they lift science says I've tried 
whatever you believe let it continue with you when you are coming down come down to my realm i will pick it up from where i'm limited and land you safely and the plane is moving and i'm sure that god watches in heaven and he's just saying oh dear these people do not even know who is flying them it's not like they met him to verify whether he's drunk whether he's all right whether he fought with his wife whether he's under a psychological problem you just know that the owner of the plane gave the man the, the, the access and you now had your confidence to sit down there why wouldn't I trust God listen I travel a lot and if I can place my destiny in the hands of an airline God bless them a number of them are my people I God bless you I'm not I'm not speaking against them literally when we are flying in the night I don't know where we are I don't know where we, we believe everything they tell us and yet these are human beings that can make mistakes nobody ever says verify that we are we are you know how are you sure we are safe and yet the creator of the ends of the earth when he now beckons that we trust him we bring all kinds of flimsy reasons and say god before i take this step prove to me yet we jump into the plane and sit down quietly i'm using flight because almost everybody here or many of us here are maybe frequent flyers in some way just see what you do every day and every time what of the driver that drives you you've been hearing that they are kidnapping yet you are still going to travel tomorrow you will think that will make you afraid you will still go and come back the longest sea journey i've had was one hour 20 minutes or so i made up my mind that i won't repeat that again 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 not from the river Rhine area i've made my contribution as far as my experience is concerned my goodness let me tell you when you are and, and these are military people carrying me they are not amateurs just said lord well, for me to live is christ and to die is gain if i die the only thing is that i didn't finish my assignment but at least are we blessed we need to tap into supernatural dimensions of the power of God. Everything that is natural has a supernatural expression. I repeat, everything that is natural has a supernatural expression. When you go to the market and you meet a trader, you say, I want to buy a wrapper. They will ask you original or um, what's the other, original or maybe imitation depending on whatever money you have there is one that looks like it but it's not it there is one that is really it everything that is natural is like that imitation there is an original the bible says everything that appears hebrews chapter 11 from verse 1 and 3 that it came from a realm that is unseen hear me there is a natural cause of prosperity but there is supernatural prosperity there is a natural medical cause of healing but there is supernatural healing there is a natural cause for growth but there is supernatural growth the choice is yours they both have their consequences if you choose to live a natural life there are many 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 things that you will be limited you will not be able to do many things but you can choose to command the supernatural even in your life are we blessed so the supernatural grants you empowerment to subdue the forces fighting against your destiny and against kingdom advance and then it empowers you to rise to a dimension where you command supernatural possibilities luke chapter 1 from verse 30 to 6 luke chapter 1 very quickly please luke chapter 1 from verse 30 to 36 need to run through a few things very quickly so we'll pray Luke chapter 1 from verse 30 now this is Mary 
And the angel said unto her, Mary, now fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son and shall call his name Jesus. We are reading to 36. He shall be great and shall be called the son of the highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father, David. He shall reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there shall be no end. Now, Mary said to the angel, How shall these things be, seeing I know not a man? You know what Mary is saying? Mary is saying, listen, I, it would have been believable if there is a process, a natural cause of how things should be from a biological angle. But there is a deficiency here. How will it happen? Because I didn't hear you mention a man. It is possible that God will speak to you and the natural formula for that result, he will not mention it. Don't forget that it is God who is speaking. Are we together? Yes. The natural course was to wait for the angel to steer the water and whoever jumps in first. But when Jesus came, Jesus would have said, I empower you with wisdom and the prophetic to know when an angel is going to come so that you will jump before the rest. Jesus said, listen, I don't negate the rule, but I can change it because I am God. Ah. If you prosper in one year, naturally, chances are excellent that you may be a thief or a fraudster, you know, all those kinds of things because you should be able to build with dignity and honor. Are we, are we, are we together now? But God can come to you and say, because of the cry of your mother, and the burden of 10 of your siblings, allowing you to go through the natural course of life, investing slowly, gradually, receiving 10% every year until you are 10 years. By the time that will happen, your, your parents would have gone and you may not have the opportunity for that prophetic word I gave them. So there is something I'm going to do in your life that in one year, now when it happens, you will not go around telling people don't follow the natural course of growth that would be erroneous but you will know that your life was an exemption are we together and the hand of the lord came upon elijah when you want to go from one place to the other if you have a boat or a camel or a donkey you use it but in this case, the hand of the Lord came upon Elijah and another rule was created to him. Do you know why I'm telling you this? Keep learning the laws of the kingdom. Keep learning the laws of life. But don't be surprised when an invisible hand picks you and moves you beyond the natural sequence of things. I believe this. I believe in diligence. I will always teach diligence. Are we together? But... Like I would always share, there are times that your boat is fine. There are times your fishing net is fine, oh Peter. There are times you are in the sea, but you will still not catch fish. That is not an issue of laziness. The fish didn't come. It's no longer your fault. At that point, you don't need skills again. You need the one who created the fish to gravitate them towards you and say, cast your net to its right side. And in a moment, you will catch fish that your boat will begin to sink. Hallelujah. It is natural for you to start a business and then look for customers, build a clientele gradually through integrity, trustworthiness, and after five years you would have gained experience, made your mistakes, failed, cried, prayed on God, sown seeds, and then you stabilize. But God can decide in one year, somebody can call you and mentor you and say you will be the African distributor of this product, just like that. And you are putting your hand on your head. Is it not in your Bible that when the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, he said we were like them that dream. What kind of miracle will make unbelievers join in the testimony? Hear me believers, let us maintain the natural course of things based on the laws of life i am not teaching you to ignore the laws of life but woe betides anybody who laughs at the possibility of a dimension higher than science higher than sociology this is my problem 
with intelligent people and secular humanists they negate the fact that there is a god in heaven and there is a possibility to tap into that infinite power go to the village and they will tell you there is a natural cause there is a way you can plant crops and everything will grow but there is a way you can have an accelerated harvest do you want it when you say yes they will not say go and stand in the farm they will say go and meet a man there is something he will give you there is the natural cause of politics you can vote you can campaign you can talk to people they can help you you can grow you can build but there is, we have seen it in this nation where god picked people you know this one it was god that lifted them hallelujah i heard of somebody true story who bought a property it was worth some millions of naira this guy brought a, pro a property it was not up to two weeks there was a company that wanted that property but they were going through a protocol to meet the owner and quickly some money came for that guy and he bought that property from the former owner and they suddenly called him that there is a company that want to buy it it was almost 10 times the amount this boy stood in shock they were desperate for that land the owner that sold it to him wanted to make trouble and say return he said no 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 we finish our transaction this is between me and these people I, I mean it i'm not exact if i'm joking i'll tell you i'm joking that was how this guy's life changed overnight many people suspected him of fraud he said i'm not i'm not a fraudster it was just the favor of god now the balance in church is that because of teachings like this many believers become irresponsible you see that they negate the natural cause of things and they say since there is favor since there is speed why should i be diligent why should i build on relationships i'm not teaching you to ignore these laws but i'm teaching you that in addition let it be at the back of your mind you can produce posters as a man of god you can produce handbills billboards you can invite people do evangelism but you know like i know that there is a limit you can do the best that you can do and someone can just frown and say pastors who eat people's money wicked people that's the comment they will give but there is a grace that can come upon you and can compel all and sundry to come and see what jesus is doing this one is not charm this one is not um, whatever it is it is the hand of god find out what was on jesus that made five thousand people to climb a mountain with him and stay there must i climb a mountain to hear him is someone learning now please let me have your attention do you know why i'm happy for you because what is coming on you this night you will marvel and wonder at what begins to happen in your life everything you have seen natural believe me when i tell you you are about to experience the extraordinary dimension of the same thing and i hope you believe what i'm saying please sit down let me give you very quickly three keys or yeah three keys and then very quickly we'll discuss how to receive the anointing and then we'll pray pay attention now in Zechariah chapter 4 and verse 6 let's rush Zechariah chapter 4 and verse 6 it says then he answered and spake unto me saying to Zerubbabel now this is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel and it applies to us he said not by might nor by power human power now and strength but by my spirit saith the Lord there are certain results that happens by the spirit and by the power of the Holy Spirit Micah chapter 3 and verse 8 Micah chapter 3 and verse 8 Micah chapter 3 and verse 8 everyone please read the first sentence will end at Lord ready one to read but truly I am full of power by the Spirit of the Lord truly 
I am full of power to do ministry. I am full of power to do business. I am full of power for governance and politics. I am full of power as a prayer warrior, power as a prophet, power as an apostle, power as a kingdom financier. Truly, I am full of power. The anointing of the Holy Spirit. Truly, I am full of power. Luke chapter 4, please. Let's just go to verse 14 for sake of time. Maybe 13 and 14. This was a temptation of Jesus Christ. And the Bible says, And when the devil had ended all the temptation, he departed from him for a season. Read 14 with me if you desire this. Ready? One to read. And Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit into Galilee. And there went about a fame of him through all the region round about it takes power to gain visibility you can be sincere you can have a message but it takes power for your generation to hear you many of us deal, it is this empowerment part remember i've taught you that the greatest need of an unsaved person the greatest need of an unbeliever is what salvation the greatest need of a saved believer is transformation and that's through the ministry of the spirit and the ministry of the word but the greatest need of a transformed believer is empowerment for many of us i give it to you that you have experienced a dimension of commendable transformation but you need the grace to defend the things you know in this kingdom we not only hear we hear and see is that true acts chapter 8 from verse 5 philip went down to samaria and preached christ unto them the bible says verse 6 the bible says and the people with one accord gave heed to those things which philip spake hearing and seeing in this kingdom we don't hear alone god can lift god can bless god can change stories we need to see you both hear and see for some of you people have only heard of what god can do through you in this season they will begin to see it very quickly i'm not going to explain it i'll just give it out very quickly because there's something i want us to press on there are four keys four keys that are responsible for spiritual empowerment you want to encounter the anointing there are four keys four demands and then i will now teach you how to receive are you ready number one consecration and intimacy with god the first requirement if it is genuine power you want the power of consecration and intimacy with god first john chapter 2 please from verse 15 please hurry up hurry up first john love not the world neither the things that are in the world can you imagine that to receive the power that gives you everything you need to lose the passion for everything that is in the world love not the world neither the things that are in the world if any man love the world the love of the father is not in him 16 for all that is in the world the lust of the flesh the lust of the eyes the pride of life is not of the father but is of the world now look at this kind of look at this thing now it says love not the world is the word eros many theologians and many people have mistaken this to mean don't love prosperity don't love increase that's not what the bible is teaching the word love is the word eros that means an ungodly affinity an attachment towards things that takes the place of christ in your life are you getting the point now god is not against us prospering god is not against us having influence what he is against is exalting those things and having an obsession that it dethrones christ in your life any kind of money that jesus must be dethroned for you to have it is useless any kind of lifting that jesus must be dethroned for you to have it is useless 
anything god gives satan will try to give it to you too but the condition is bow down and worship me that was what he brought to jesus the three hebrew boys remember satan is obsessed with worship transgenerational allegiance do you know the reason why god cannot trust many people with his anointing is because they are not set apart to look beyond themselves and to see jesus lifted i think it was in lagos or so i was teaching was it yesterday now or day before yesterday and i was telling them i said you know not every closed door is demonic there are certain doors is god that closed it by himself as an act of his mercy because he has weighed you and found out that if that door is opened the the existence of the flesh within you there are people no matter how they fast and pray for the prophetic they will not receive that grace do you know why because if you actually receive the creative dimension of the prophetic in anger you will cause and kill people because you are angry you will kill more dead bodies you will be cooperating with satan because of anger so god will rather withdraw it until that intimacy with the holy spirit and that transformation is there there are many people including preachers there are certain anointings if god gives you today you will not pray again why will you pray when people will travel from several nations and will pay everything to come and meet the great man of god apostle joshua selman what do you need prayer for again what do you need fasting for again can i tell you this if it is the anointing you want to receive is more than your money you can drop your seed and god says nonsense carry your money and go away it is your heart i'm looking for prayer and fasting is important but let me tell you before your prayer and fasting will make sense and have value in the spirit your heart condition must be right the desire and the desperation to see jesus revealed and glorified in your life do you know you always hear me give this example imagine that god opens your eyes to the prophetic and a millionaire or a billionaire billionaires are all over your church or your ministry you literally can look at them and god opens your eyes and you see what they have in their account you've already bought sharp sand to build your house and you are limited there's there's no money you've calculated everything your engineer has told you 300 million will build a solid structure for you and the people trust you that's when you will know whether you are saved or not because one spectacular prophetic word and you see human beings when they trust you they become vulnerable to you sincerely you can tell someone look you have one billion two hundred and fifty thousand ah yes that's true oh yeah the other part i won't touch the one billion but that other slice give on to caesar what you, know, you can twist anything and just because you are talking and the person is falling while you are talking does not mean it is god that is behind it you see i told you that you can misuse the anointing there is a level of charismatism that the anointing brings there is an aura it's a fragrance it can attract everything to you that is the reason why people have to be dead to self are we together consecration and intimacy proverbs 23 and verse 26 this has become an anthem in my life and i'm praying that someone will finally get that revelation please look up my son give me mine give me thine many people are giving god offerings many people are giving god pulpit god does not want your pulpit he's not looking for your offering your tithe all of those things are secondary let me tell you sincerely if you want power with god koinonia hear me what god wants is your heart i can tell you by the authority of scripture by the privilege of learning from the fathers and by my own experience if you are genuinely anointed genuinely anointed of god there is almost a godlike worship that people can bring around you because of the all surpassing manifestation of the excellency of god in your life even you sometimes you will look at yourself and say my god who am i i know what the anointing can do believe me 
and if you are not broken before God and especially our generation of ministers small grace here small anointing and that's it you see people misbehaving all around with the anointing small prophetic small apostolic and all kinds of things and God just withdraws the more he wants to give you because when God tests you with it you are rude you are lawless you are indisciplined you are you are you are rebellious you don't have any regard for authority God says no this little we've given this guy let's leave it there if we multiply this anointing you will kill everybody it means people will start kneeling down lick your shoe worship you call you king of kings then they will receive healing and go another person will do that kind of thing go and read the stories of people I'm not being sarcastic who did not allow God to walk on their hearts preachers let me encourage you co-laborers in the gospel let's be careful how we impart graces on people just because people are committed and their hearts are open does not mean they are prepared let God vet them so that you do not anoint people who will be a casualty to you and others history has taught us a lesson anointing people unprepared will always lead to casualty we are all students in the school of the spirit don't get me wrong it's like carrying your car and giving your 12 or 13 year old child the way children are brilliant now one can even drive with his eyes closed children are have mastered the art of surprising everybody but the chances are excellent that that child he will most likely be the only one with that car among his contemporaries and his pride not incompetence that will kill that child do you know what it means to carry the grace that grants you access to the destinies the loyalty the finances of people it was a father in the Lord Baba Adeboye who made a statement one time and he said by the grace of God if he needs a shirt today by the privilege of the influence God has given him he can make one statement and say brethren I need a shirt and he said literally without exaggeration his size can finish in the market because everyone will want to go and do you know what it means to have that level of influence don't tell me I will be fine are you seeing why God works on our hearts you can speak to someone and say in the name of Jesus Christ may the Lord lift you and in two weeks he comes back he has become a billionaire and the person comes to you as a billionaire and say man of God I'm still your boy oh good news to the ear of a preacher a billionaire is your boy are you learning tonight while you are laughing please make sure you understand what I'm saying God demands death to the flesh if you must carry genuine power billionaire is your boy and can say sir it looks like you are not happy is there any problem what can I do for you and Satan comes to stand by you and says is this how you are going to allow remember your childhood remember how you suffered now is your chance and yet the Spirit of God tells you do not touch one naira from that man rather sow into his life and bless him and you say I reject that spirit that that the spirit that is not an economist to use your brain and know that this will flow from I mean Can you be so anointed that God places you in the midst of greatness and you still have self-control? There are many wealthy people today who run away from churches, respectfully speaking, because they won't let them rest. Once the preacher is preaching, he's looking at everybody, but they know who he's talking to. And the people say, please, it's not a cause to be blessed. That's why most people don't testify. Because they know it's a risk. Oh, this is what God has done. We just floated two aircraft, I mean, one estate and all of that. And the preacher is clapping. And the man knows exactly what that clap means. <laughs> See, I, I made a vow and a covenant that by the privilege of God's grace, I'm not saying it by the strength of the flesh, this ministry will never inconvenience anybody because of tea and bread. If God will not provide the wisdom to fund this assignment, I will honorably go back home and sit down. It's better to sit down and not do ministry but have your integrity are we together now
consecration and intimacy with God. Number two, what is the second key that governs the manifestation of the anointing in your life? Honor to the word of God. If you do not live by the principles of the kingdom, honor to the word of God. If you do not live by the principles of the kingdom, you will never access the anointing. Please write it very quickly. Honor to the word of God. In Proverbs 23, verse 22, the B part where we just read, he said, my son, give me thine heart. Proverbs 23, 26, he says, and let your ears, your eyes observe my ways. John chapter 1 and verse 3. John chapter 1 and verse 3. He says, And without him, the word, all things were made by the word. And without him, the word was not anything made that was made. Are we together? Even the power of God hides in his word. Habakkuk chapter 3. It's become an anthem here too. Habakkuk chapter 3. We'll start from verse 3 and 4. God came from Taman and the Holy One from Mount Paran. His glory covered the heavens and the earth was full of his praise. Verse 4. I wish we could have verse 4 in Amplified. Otherwise, no problem. It says, and his brightness was as the light. It says, rays streamed from his hand and there in that sun-like splendor was the hiding place of his power. There is a relationship between the word of God and the power of God. The second key is honor to the word of God. I submit to you that I have a problem with people who manifest power and I cannot see in their lives honor for the word of God and the principles of the kingdom. If you manifest power and you do not have honor for the word of God, you deserve to be suspected. Are we together? Because it's like seeing somebody with a child who you never saw pregnancy. Are we together? Your stomach was as flat as my own now and then immediately you just drag a child. No, we have a right to say whose child is this? And it's not maybe surrogacy or anything. You say it's my child that was pregnant. We need to examine that kind of pregnancy. That's how the word is and miracles on the supernatural. If you do not have honor to the word of God, we look at your life and we do not see that you understand the word of God. Believe me, do not blame people if they suspect the manifestations that come through your life. The word of God gives credence to the outworkings of his power in your life. Are we together? Number three. What is the third key that controls spiritual empowerment? Prayer with fasting. For me, it's not just prayer and fasting. It is prayer with fasting. The emphasis is prayer. The fasting is an accelerator. Prayer with fasting. Luke chapter 4. Very quickly, we'll look at verse 1 and 2. Then we'll go to 14 and 15. Luke chapter 2. Luke chapter 4. 1 and 2. The Bible talks about Jesus being full of the Holy Ghost. So he was full of the Holy Ghost. He returned from Jordan and he was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. Verse 2. He says, being 40 days tempted of the devil. And the Bible says, in those days he did eat nothing. And when they were ended, he was afterwards hungry. Let's jump for the sake of time to verse 14. You know his temptation, the three temptations and all of that. And the Bible says, Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit into Galilee. And there went about a fame all the regions round about. 15. It says, and he taught in their synagogues, being glorified of all. If you want to walk in genuine spiritual power, the facilitator of the anointing is prayer with fasting. There is nobody I know who genuinely commands the supernatural who is not a student of prayer with fasting. There are wrong fasts. There are religious prayers and fasting that does not carry any power. It's just a show of religiosity with no, it's just for health benefits. But there is the kind of fast God has commanded. And then according to James chapter 5, 
there is the effectual fervent prayer of the righteous man that avails much it, it has tremendous power dynamic in its working amplified says right for reference james 5 from verse 13 to 18 james 5 13 to 18 Are we together? The last now. The last key. Are you ready? The last key is impartation. Impartation. You want to access spiritual empowerment. You want to access the anointing. You need impartation. What is impartation? A system of transference of spiritual possibilities. Impartation is a way to transfer the power of God, to transfer the possibilities that are in the Christ through the Holy Spirit to you. Now, here's where I want you to pay attention because we're wrapping up now. Commanding the supernatural part two. We're examining the dynamics of the anointing, the necessity for the anointing. There are two principal platforms for impartation. I want you to learn this now. There are two principal platforms for impartation. Number one, you can have an impartation directly from God. Impartation directly from God. An example of this we see is 1 Kings. 1 Kings chapter 3. When we begin our reading from verse 3, 1 Kings chapter 3, from verse 3, down to 13. Write it for reference, please. 1 Kings 3, from verse 3 to 13. This was an encounter that Solomon had with God. He received the impartation of the grace and the anointing for understanding and wisdom directly from God. Solomon loved the Lord walking in the statutes of, his, of David, his father. Only he sacrificed and burnt incense in high places. The king went to Gibeon and sacrificed there. And he offered the sacrifice upon the altar, verse 5. The Bible says, God came to Solomon. The Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night. And God said, ask what I shall give thee. And Solomon said, thou hast shown unto thy servant David, my father, great mercy, according as he walked before thee in truth and in righteousness, in uprightness of heart with thee. And thou hast kept for him this great kindness. Thou hast given him a son to sit on his throne as it is this day. What a good introduction. And now, O Lord my God, thou hast made thy servant king instead of David my father. And I am but a little child. I know not how to go out or how to come in. And thy servant is in the midst of thy people which thou hast chosen. A great people that cannot be numbered or counted for multitude. Give therefore thy servant an understanding heart to judge thy people that I may discern between good and bad. For who is able to judge these thy great people? Every legal practitioner should pray this prayer. Hearing is a secret to excel in your legal practice. This man is praying and saying, I need to judge people. I need grace from you. Because these people are great. The complications around their lives. I need an anointing more than just my technical know-how. The Bible says, and the speech pleased the Lord that Solomon asked this thing. Almost there. And God said unto him, because thou hast asked this thing and hast not asked for thyself long life, do you know that there are graces controlling this? Long life or ask riches or ask the life of your enemies, but you have asked understanding to discern judgment. Here's what God gave him. Behold, I have done according to thy words. I have given thee. Who gave him? God directly. I've given you a wise and an understanding heart so that there was none like thee before thee neither shall neither after thee shall any rise like unto you last verse and I have also given thee that which thou hast not asked both riches 
how do you give riches did he give him money so what exactly is riches god is saying i'm giving you something now i'm giving you riches i'm giving you honor so that there shall not be any among the kings like unto you all thy days solomon woke up in the morning and supernatural manifestation of wisdom with wisdom came wealth and every other thing you can receive directly from god number two what is the second platform for receiving impartation impartation can come as impartation from the careers of the anointing or the second way you can receive the anointing now is impartation from the careers of the anointing it is true that there are men that carry this anointing in matthew chapter 25 and verse 9 the parable of the ten virgins remember the foolishness of the five virgins they were all virgins so it was not about the issue of being in the fold or not being in the fold their foolishness was because they did not know how to access the anointing here was the recommendation given to them the wise answered saying not so lest there be not enough for us he says but go ye rather to them that sell and buy when it has to do with the anointing there are those who sell the word sell there does not just mean it means exchange there are custodians of the anointing it says if you want the anointing go to them that sell and buy how do you buy it you buy with honor you buy with meekness these are currencies every dimension of anointing you need in your life today believe me there are vessels that carry it bodily right now under a certain condition it can flow freely to you there are three conditions that you must satisfy if you must receive the anointing from careers number one is called genuine connection or genuine followership the first condition you want to receive the anointing from a genuine career of it you need genuine heart-to-heart -heart connection genuine followership as we see in the case of elijah and elisha second kings chapter 2 from verse 1 to 15 just write it for reference second kings chapter 2 from verse 1 to 15 so three conditions if you want to receive impartation from a vessel that has been trusted by god number one is genuine connection number two honor i've taught you here that honor is the key for access honor what is honor the discerning the celebrating and if need be the rewarding of people for their uniqueness genuine connection condition number one honor condition number two number three service service is a jackpot gateway into the anointing now let's look at a few instances of impartation and then we'll be ready to pray numbers chapter 11 we'll read 16 and 17 then we'll go to 24 and 25 this was moses now and the lord said unto moses gather unto me 70 men of the elders of israel whom thou knowest to be elders of the people notice those who were qualified for the impartation he did not gather children and lay hands on them an elder is one who has an advantage of knowledge and if need be experience i'm not saying god cannot anoint children but this is just to draw a lesson from it people who have been worked upon prepared whom thou knowest to be elders of the people and officers over them and bring them unto the tabernacle of the congregation that they may stand here with thee 17 and i will come down and talk with thee there and i will take of the spirit which is upon thee and i will put it upon them and they shall bear the burden of the people with thee 
that thou bear it not thyself alone this is what god does not want this already cancels away this obsession for superstar christianity where just one person carries the anointing when you see most men of god stand like superstars they really don't want to be superstars is because most people have not paid the price to be partakers of that grace indeed you're not going to receive an anointing from a man of god with pride and carelessness and lack of discernment everybody who carries anything from god knows that it is the grace of god but believe me there was a price behind it and nobody would throw away anything valuable just on the floor are we together but then sadly there are other people who enjoy that obsession and would never give people a chance to partake of that grace Isaiah 9 8 remember when he sent a word to Jacob it lighted upon Israel that means every time God anoints one person it is not just to remain with you you should be a distribution channel so that many other people can partake of that grace let's go back to our scripture where we were reading numbers 11 24 and 25 we have to rush numbers 11 24 and 25 and Moses went out and told the people the words of the Lord and gathered the 70 men and the elders of the people and set them round about the tabernacle. Verse 25. And the Lord came down in a cloud and spake unto them and took of the spirit that was upon him and gave it to the 70 elders. And it came to pass that when the spirit rested upon them, they prophesied when the spirit rested upon them they prospered when the spirit rested upon them they became wise if the spirit rests upon you something must happen it is impossible the spirit there means the grace the grace cannot come upon you and you remain the same it's impossible when the spirit rested the bible didn't say when the spirit came to rest means you have found a habitation the anointing can come but it may not rest the performance happens for those who allow the anointing to rest. Genuine connection, honor, and service. Last scripture. Numbers chapter 27 from verse 18 and to 20 oh yeah yeah oh yeah yeah oh yeah yeah oh yeah yeah yahweh yahweh oh yeah yeah oh yeah yeah oh yeah yeah oh yeah yeah yahweh Let your kingdom come, let your will be done, Yahweh, Yahweh. Let your kingdom come, let your kingdom let your come, let will be done, Yahweh, Yahweh. We have gotten to the crescendo of this service and I want you to be sensitive. Believe me when I tell you, you have come for this service to receive something tonight. Numbers chapter 27 And the Lord said unto Moses, Take thee Joshua, the son of Nun, a man in whom the Spirit is already on, but there are dimensions that are not yet there lay thy hands upon him 19 and set him before Eleazar the priest and before all the congregation and give him a charge in their sight verse 20 and thou shalt put some of your honor you see that honor is a grace it is transferable put some of your honor upon him that all the congregation of the children of Israel might be obedient. If that grace is not on you as a leader, nobody will listen to you. You can be as disciplined as anything, but if that grace is on you, you will.
surprised that your words will fall on deaf ears deuteronomy chapter 34 and verse 9 deuteronomy 34 and verse 9 let's read together are we ready inside outside everywhere if you can see it let's read one to read and joshua the son of Nun was full of the spirit of wisdom for moses had laid his hands upon him and the children of israel hearkened unto him and did as the lord commanded moses listen i can tell you at every point and at every junction in my life when what grace and what dimension came to my life we are going to pray please even if you have never done it for one minute i want you to cry before the god of heaven this is my season of encounter with unction lord i open up my spirit go ahead and pray Go ahead and pray. Pray. Shaneke parados kadila badi yasada bekatusia. Let a man so account of us, stewards of the mysteries of the kingdom. Moreover. It is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. Cry unto God. There are ministers who might be watching. There are business people. There are politicians. Hallelujah. Listen. Listen. I knew that I had an apostolic call upon my life but I didn't know that I had the grace this grace they call the kingmaker anointing this is for politics and governance I'm not saying it because I'm, I'm, I fear God I'm, I'm not to do politics go and read about Samuel there are graces you can literally enthrone people that's what I told you in Koinonia you don't invite people and say rich people come you make them by the anointing Can I tell you this? Please do not allow the devil cheat you tonight. I know there are people who say, forget about this man of God. They are, they are all proud people. They all talk nonsense. I beseech you by the message of God. You are not discerning. You will pay the price for nothing. Only a sure will reign forever. To his kingdom there will be no end. Hallelujah. I remember there was a year, this would be about the first time I'm making this kind of statement. There was a year that I had an audience with a particular politician somewhere. And I don't know what they told him about me. We had a nice time and he sat down. I'm not one who will go and start prophesying. I don't do that. It's not. I have an apostolic call. My focus is the edification of the body. And I looked at this man and he wanted to contest for something. And honestly, it is not pride. But in my mind, I said, oh dear. If this man, it looked to me like Jesus at the well with the Samaritan woman. I said, oh dear. The hymn writer said, oh, what needless pain we bear. At the end of it he was just speaking english you know sometimes these are wonderful politicians can be proud people they think every man of god is looking for money and all of that and i was looking he never requested for prayer he never requested for anything he was just making noise and i looked at him and when he finished talking i told him i said i'm sorry sir but i want to speak to you and he was just making a jest and sarcasm and i said go and write it you will win your primaries but he will never win the election. And he was laughing because it was impossible based on what he wrote. I said, I know you have met men of God who prophesied and spoke because of monies that you gave them, but you will know 
that there are certain people who are remnants indeed when this guy won the primaries he was happy very sarcastic statement and all of that and when he lost the election it was a shock I remember I went to preach somewhere and they said ah the man had I was around he wanted to see me I said please don't bring that person there no I don't hate him I don't fight with anybody but can I tell you please don't generalize people there are people God has honored I'm saying this for a reason there is human worship it is wrong there are men of God who make themselves Alpha and Omega the Bible says to minister according to the measure of grace if you have not been anointed to enthrone government and enthrone people and you are just making noise the disappointment will make the people arrest you one day and lock you because the grace is not on you but can I tell you God's system of king priest prophet has not failed there are still men that God has anointed there are graces that can enthrone this is not just for politicians a man overnight you can send one word was it not Elijah who said by this time you've heard the testimonies this is there's nothing in this ministry that is stage managed I want you to pray that one prayer what dimension do you see God lifting you pray that the grace and the unction that will make it happen just help those under the anointing please pray believe me there are mighty angelic activities happening in this place now dimensions in ministry dimensions in business dimensions in governance show us the ancient path will you lead us along eternal highway we want to follow the ways of Jesus please pray please pray show us the ancient path will you lead us along eternal highway we want to follow the ways of Jesus I want to pray for you now he that receives a prophet in the name of a prophet I want to pray for you and I want you to believe what is coming upon you you will command the supernatural as many as we are here so are our needs and every dimension requires a grace therefore I stand by the privilege of this election of grace I stretch my hands from the north to the south Parash Kadia I'm telling you I'm just in fire this is what I'm seeing at the count of three the unction required for the next season of your life in the name of Jesus help them please at the count of three like fire from heaven it will come upon you one two three take that grace now take that help them please my god take that grace now take that grace in the name of jesus christ take that grace now help that woman please take that grace now superior anointings man of god woman of god i call for the apostolic i call for the prophetic i call for the evangelistic receive that grace take that unction in the name of jesus christ I pray for those in business that grace of an entrepreneur the grace that can subdue systems and structures and give you visibility may that anointing rest upon you now may that anointing rest upon you now
the anointing that brings speed into the life of a man acceleration is a possibility in this kingdom therefore i stretch my hands may that man to rest upon you now speed in destiny speed in your life help that woman please speed in your life I want to pray for you there is an anointing for influence and visibility you can do all you can and your generation will not know you are there but there is an unction that can come upon you and cause your voice to be heard I pray for everyone under the sound of my voice and for those who are following and connecting by faith for some of you this anointing you will literally feel something physically coming on you as i'm praying in the name of the grace for visibility right now right now may that unction come upon you may that unction come back may that grace come upon you let me pray for everyone here who is part of this spiritual family and you are into politics and governance the grace that enthrones in the name of jesus the son of the living god may that unction rest upon you right now marvelously rest upon you right now hear me when it has to do with wealth and abundance there are principles of productivity value exchange increase relationships negotiations and all these are valid financial principles but there is a prophetic dimension to wealth there is wealth that comes from heaven he said by this time tomorrow I want to pray for you because for many people and many families this is the area of increasing things have been tied in your life I want you to believe it don't let the devil tell you that there is no prophetic dimension to wealth and by a prophet the Lord God brought Israel out of Egypt and by a prophet they were preserved I pray for you everyone who is in Egypt financially hear the word of the lord i prophesy to you come out now come out now come out now the eyes that has refused to see you and favor you i open that eyes to see you The hand that has refused to serve whoever is responsible for partnership with the Holy Ghost for your rising by reason of this unction I declare your rising is confirmed now hallelujah hear me there are many of us who desire to walk in signs and wonders genuine miracles not fake stage managed miracles genuine healings genuine deliverance genuine signs and wonders some of you are here you are men of god some of you you are here into missions but it looks like there is no result some of you are even pastors and in all honesty you do not have consistent predictable ever increasing results by the privilege of the election of grace I stretch my hands towards you and I decree and declare by the power that raised Christ from the dead step into the realm of the miraculous now the final impartation and we're done see believe me when I tell you honor and favor 
are real no matter how sincere you are no matter what level of character and integrity you have if you do not have the grace for honor and the grace for favor you will not go far believe me when i tell you this i want to pray that grace upon your life it was a grace i pursued with hunger in my heart and when it came i knew it had come take over take over i have come to the end of my son take over jehovah i have touched something is happening in this place hallelujah hallelujah i have come to the end of my soul there is an anointing called the esther anointing it was in 2010 2009 2010 god opened my eyes to this mystery of the esther anointing the grace that can pick you from shushan and put you to sit in the palace i stretch my hands right now may that mantle for honor and favor that came upon Hadassah may that grace rest upon you now take that grace now take that grace now the grace that enthroned her man will not stop you in the name of Jesus Christ From today everything that represents shame an embargo of shame and disappointment over your life I tear it like a veil in the name of Jesus Christ hear me for some of you I prophesy to you between now and Sunday I stand by the God of heaven and I decree and declare every day of this week will open you up to a new chapter of strange manifestation hear me by reason of this grace you carry there are battles you will not need to fight the jealousy of god will arise and fight it for you where your father could not cross where your mother could not cross hear me what limited your father what limited your mother what limited those who had gone ahead of you i stand by the rod of the apostolic and the prophetic i scatter it before you right now i scatter it before you right now in the name of jesus christ everybody who has forgotten you because there were demonic manipulations that took you away from their memory they promised they will be there and help you but as it is right now you will pass them and it's as if they are not seeing you go back with this unction this night and watch the wonder walking power of jesus Wave your hands to Jesus and give him praise. Wave it to the King of Kings. Wave it to Jesus. The King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Something has come upon your life. You are waving your hands and you are allowing the anointing rest. Oh, hallelujah, we give you praise. Our lives will never be the same. Never be the same. It will be proof that you are a people God has helped and God has blessed in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ now listen very carefully next week there will be fire from heaven to the earth in this place hallelujah 
not only because it is a miracle service for the month of February please any point of contact you have your documents court case issues whatever has mocked God this is not idolatry please you can come with it as a point of contact because I'm going to be praying on it this is a year of marvelous life there are some things that must end are we together now please be intentional about what I'm telling you and then let me challenge you in writing your prayer request don't be careless if you are a couple for God's sake you try this sit with your spouse or even your children and agree what are we use the power of unity in writing your request and see what God will do most times we just stand husband is doing his own wife you can sit down with God I know the things God has already spoken to me about it and I'll be praying and preparing my spirit there are some things that need to shift are we together please make sure none of your loved ones misses this miracle service and for those who cannot come insist that they connect their documents whatever it is you are having trouble in your place of work it looks like doors are opening or there are patterns in your life and you are already seeing it happen again please write it down with faith in your heart your money is hanging somewhere your spiritual life is going down everything you put your hand to fails write it down let's see the God that answers by fire listen let me tell you God is determined this year more than ever before to give us visitations if our hearts are truly open to receive and for those of you who have traveled from several nations to come here please take this fire by all means back to your regions in the name of Jesus Christ thank you Jesus thank you Jesus thank you Jesus hallelujah please let's all stand for the altar call we're a soul winning ministry and we believe that every time we're gathered there will always be someone who needs Jesus desperately we're not ashamed of our love for Jesus he's the basis and the reason for all that we do we've spoken about commanding the supernatural and oh how we desire to see people encounter Jesus you are here under the sound of my voice in the main auditorium all the overflows outside and following from your homes from your offices and you're saying apostle hearing you made me know again that I need Jesus with all my heart and with my everything or you are here you are saying apostle I love Jesus but as it is my life has gone haywire I need to rededicate my life wherever you are we're not going to waste time tonight the holy ghost has already spoken to you i'm going to count five please run like there's fire on the mountain we're out of time i want you to come before jesus christ once i count five i'll begin the prayers all the overflows everywhere please run one let's celebrate them as they come run to jesus let tonight be the beginning of a new season two His ways are superior. Some of you are coming out for the sake of your destiny. In your salvation is the salvation of your family members. In your salvation is the salvation of your loved ones. Are you coming? Please rush. Three. Okay, I'm told if you can, if you are not yet out, you can come with your bags and your Bibles. But if you are out, please, those who are close to them, protect their valuable so that we don't have people picking their things are you still coming apostle i think i'm saved but i'm not really sure join them quickly there is such a thing as the assurance of salvation young and old everyone please come hallelujah may god bless you and i salute every one of you for making this noble decision when it has to do with the matters of salvation there is no shame 
there is no age there is no gender there is no nothing all it takes is hunger genuine hunger for jesus are we together i salute you it takes a lot of courage it takes discernment to yield to the prompting of the holy spirit i'm still yet to do the last count so if you are here and you still need to join them let's make it fast we're out of time join quickly so that we pray jesus said ye must be born again the new birth is the foundation for the believers experience now please raise your right hand if you will those in front please do same in all the overflows and you who is lifting your hand in your your home your office your church wherever it is or those who will be following by way of rebroadcast it is an opportunity for you to make jesus lord of your life also say this after me let it be a truthful declaration from the depth of your heart say lord jesus tonight i have heard your word i believe that you died for me i believe that you rose again for my justification right now i make jesus lord of my life i make jesus savior of my soul i make jesus king of my life i declare that the power of sin satan hell and the grave is broken over my life from tonight and forever i am a child of god i am saved washed by the blood of the lamb i go forward ever and backward never and i enjoy the joy of salvation amen please keep your hands lifted father thank you for these precious ones you have brought them to be part of this fold the family of faith I thank you for the power that saves, the power that can save even unto the uttermost. By the authority of scripture, I declare your sins forgiven. And I declare in the name of Jesus that the Lord gives you a new beginning from tonight. You begin to walk in the newness of life and you walk in righteousness even forevermore. In the name of Jesus, you go forward ever and backward never. Welcome to a new spiritual adventure in the name of of Jesus the son of the living God amen and amen thank you very much now very quickly there are counselors waving their hands they are waving the placard at you I'd like you to please move in concert they'll have a word or two with you and then you'll be back to your seat let's celebrate them as they go hallelujah praise the name of the Lord Thank you so much for your patience. Let me reiterate the announcement that... Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye! Pray! Pray, pray for your destiny. Salas kade bashka na kata branda kate kato. Kate branda kata bako tosko tobre kate kene kata. The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.